the June 12th, 2024 regular meeting of the Board of Cycling will come to order if you all want to join us in the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so just so you guys know, we're starting with our public hearing, and then after that, we'll do our comments from the public. That's why you've come. Um, so we will officially start the 2024 Neighborhood Assistance Act tax credit application um, public hearing. It's my understanding we've received two applications for the 2024 NAA program from both the Stoynton Community Center and the Mystic Seaport. Mr. Sullivan, would you like to give an overview of the program? Sure. The Neighborhood Assistance Act, you're all very familiar with it. Presumably, but this is a tax credit program provided to the Department of Revenue, Connecticut Department of Revenue Services, that allows uh, nonprofits to solicit donations from, from uh, corporations in, in Connecticut or corporations to pay Connecticut income tax. Um, what they do is they, whatever they donate to a nonprofit through this program, they're allowed to get a Connecticut uh, a credit, a tax credit on their Connecticut income tax. So if they donate $1,000, they can take $1,000 right off of their, uh, their Connecticut tax bill. So they have to be uh, 1120 corporations. It can't be an LLC or a partnership because they don't pay uh, state corporate taxes. So it's, uh, the program doesn't cost the town anything, but it's up to the, the applicant, the uh, nonprofit, to solicit on their own behalf the donations from, from corporations and then <coughs> If they have somebody who wants to do that, the corporation puts in an application to the DRS between September 1st, uh, September 15th and October 1st of, of the succeeding year, or the coming, coming fall. And that, that credit is approved, then the company will donate the, uh, make a donation to that company, and then if I were tax returns at the end of the year, they can, they can apply credit to their tax, to their tax returns. So as you said, we did get a two Excuse two applications, me. one from the seaport. Jim? Yes, sir. Don't mean to interrupt you, but what, what's the downside, the possible downside for the corporation? It sounds like a no brainer. Yeah, no. I mean, who wouldn't? It's yeah. work on their part to go Just to form it. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, they don't gain anything. It's just a way to, for them to give back to the community. And they just have to apply to DRS. Right. With and the they, paperwork. And, and do, you know, jump through those hoops. Okay. They don't very actively engage in the community. It's really, you know, no, no skin off their nose. Yeah, it doesn't seem to take, take much uh, salesmanship from the receiver of it. Yeah, I mean, and usually, you know, the usual suspects, every, every year it's, you know, uh, Messi, all of the uh, Eversource, uh, David Standard, and the corporations like that, who are, you know, mainstays of the, of the community. Thank you. Didn't mean, didn't mean to interrupt. So the, uh, the seaport, you know, they're, they're looking for $108,000. Um, the most they can ask for is $150,000. Uh, to date, since I've been here, nobody's gotten more than, I don't I think, $24,000 in, in any one year. But you won't get it if you don't ask for it. Yeah. And that's for energy conservation programs. And the same thing for the Como. They're working on a multi-year uh, energy uh, efficiency program, and they're asking for the full 150. And we'll, we'll see what they get. Okay. Okay. And, um, thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. No problem. Um, and who decides whether they get it or not? The DRS. DRS. I'll, once these things are approved by the once these applications are approved by the the town, I'll submit them to DRS. DRS will let me know. They've approved these, and then if they approve them, let me know. I will let the applicants know, and then they will go out and solicit for uh, the donation. And what, what's implied by our approval? Uh, what are they looking for you, in the town? We're just really the watchdog. Uh, you know, it's, it's similar to like grants that go to nonprofits. Sometimes stuff gets passed through us. Yeah. Federal grant or state grant is coming through to, us. With the Mystic Seaport or Always Home or one of those things. They want to funnel it to the town because the town has a financial structure and the administrative structure to monitor these things and make sure everything's complied with. Because if they, you know, one of the requirements is if they do get over twenty-five thousand dollars 
in any one year, that program has to be audited. So now the towns will be on the hook to make sure that at the completion of the program, that specific program has a programmatic audit. Is that the building department or the finance department? Finance department's responsibility, well, the town's responsibility. I'll say the first selection's responsibility. <laughs> okay. we, we don't do the audit. We just have to make sure that they have, like they're, they have, if nonprofits have annual audits by independent CPAs, that independent CPA would also have to do a, a separate audit of that program expenditures. So we just make sure they know that? Yes, and we make sure they do it. They do. Okay. So if, if they, anybody gets more than 25, they get $108,000, sure. As soon as that, that thing's done, I'll be all over them. You know, where's your, where's your audit? Where's your audit? Where's your audit? Okay. Any other questions? No? I don't think we have anybody from the C4 or Como here. So, um, any other, anything else? Anybody else want to speak to it? Yeah, go ahead, Blanc. <laughs> so, uh, how come the Funk Hunter Neighborhood Center has, has an S? Do we just throw their name in? And, and, uh, they have in the past, right? They have in the past. They, have, they didn't this year. You know, maybe they just weren't able to find anybody to support them. Because it's on the nonprofit to find the map that so they might have just forgotten or slipped up or. Uh... Well, I mean, we do. Uh, we, we send out two notices, in public, two public notices. Oh. We, we make in this in the March. We let them know the program's coming up, and then last week we had a public hearing notice to let them know that uh, they would do this week, and then we would need you know on the public hearing tonight to discuss and approve them. I cannot. I don't think the seaports applied before, have they? So they're, no, they have They're new, yeah. so yeah. somebody noticed. But yeah, anyone's here and knows of nonprofits, it happens every year, so you could you know, remind them or nudge them, or if you're part of a nonprofit that hasn't applied before and want to learn more, you can reach out. Yeah. So this is it. So it has to go to a hearing like this for them to be approved, and so this is the, the, the final last step. final for, for this year. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, if they say no, we're going to approve the combo and not the seat board. You know, the, the board of selectmen has the power to do that. <laughs> <laughs> that over their heads. But yeah, this is the deadline, so they'd be for next year. But they have applied a bunch in the past. So the combo applies every year. Yeah. PNC, I think, applied a few years. So they're aware of it. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, maybe human services could contact the nonprofits in that town when they when this kind of thing comes up. I believe they do, but I'll double check. They do contact. Them? They have a like email list there, so I believe this goes out, but I'll double check. Remember? I don't remember that it did. The Stonington nonprofit uh, roundtable um, dissolved. So yeah. Still get, emails. still get emails. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anything else on this application? All right. If not, we'll close the public hearing. And now I'll make a motion to, or no, yes, could I get a motion <laughs> to approve the 2024 Neighborhood Assistance Act tax credit applications from the Stonington Como and the Mystic Seaport Museum? So moved. Second. Any further discussion? <coughs> no? If not, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. And we will look into how human services communicates and be sure hopefully that everybody knows for next year. All right, now back to our kind of regular meeting. Comments from the public. And if you want to comment, um, you can do it from back there. Or if you want to be on screen, you can come up here um, or stand there. And we can turn and just say your name and address. Thank you, Jim. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> don't, don't make eye contact with them on your way up. <laughs> Any comments? Yep, bye. Thank okay. you. I sent this to uh, trying to get to you, Beth. I didn't have your email. Yeah, no, I got email. It. You got it? Okay. Okay. Would you like a hard copy? or Looks like you got it. So we're all set. I got it. Okay. You got it? Oh. You good? I'll take a hard copy. Okay. All right. Good. Actually, you, you got it. Yeah, okay, we'll play it. Okay. Well, so uh, I'll take the opportunity to uh, to read into the camera because you know, in, in a sense, you've done well by I think putting all of this stuff on the internet, and uh, and uh, so uh, this is a letter concerning the phase two of the comprehensive zoning rewrite. Uh, dear selectman, my compliments on the creation of the town of Stonington YouTube channel, the recording and airing of meetings on YouTube, 
and use of Zoom. These are good uses of technology. However, for open government, this technology comes with shortcomings, such as citizen interaction and feedback from public officials. I know you value transparency. The purpose of this letter is to bring to your attention there appears to have been and can use, continues to be a lapse of transparency related to phase two of the zoning rewrite. I call your attention to PCC's May 22nd virtual meeting agenda. Item 2B reads, discussion recommended residential district amendments. The choice of words for 2B were deceptive. The district amendments were zone changes, recommendations for zone changes, one for over 1,000 acres along Route 1, Montauk Avenue, Collins Road, and Flanders Road, changing it from its rural character to one-acre lots, RA40, with reduced road frontage, plus enhancements for the construction of attached housing in RA40 zones. A much higher level of public engagement for a zone change of this scale was required and didn't occur. The choice of a Zoom format for the Phase 2 meetings and use for zone changes of this scale showed poor judgment, resulting in little citizen import and poor discussion between PZC members. The agenda for the Zoom meetings didn't list public comment. However, in prior meetings, public comment has been allowed. That's good, not, but not sufficient. The Phase 2 Zoom meetings have essentially been PZC and FHI. This is wrong. After the Zoom meetings, not a single comment appears on the YouTube because comments are disabled. There have been no stories in the newspapers about FHI's new vision for Stonington. A viewer of the town YouTube channel was left with the conclusion after seeing, hearing little comment that the public, your appointed PCC commissioners, and you approve of the zone change. To an active observer, the rezone is at odds with the 2015 POCD, which contained a citizen questionnaire about the future. The highest rated item was protect natural resources and open space preservation. The lowest rated item in the citizen questionnaire was affordable housing. A zone change is also recommended for the closely knit Lord's Point community, approximately 50, 150 homes on 66 acres. Properties in Lord's Point are largely non-conforming because of undersized lots. Approximately 90% of the lots are non-conforming. It is to the town's credit that an attempt is being made to address this nonconformity. However, no one from Lord's Point was present on the Zoom, and it appears no one from Lord's Point was consulted, as 85% of the properties remain nonconforming under FHI's recommendations. Please play back the YouTube at 15.40 and 16.10 minutes, and you'll see how FHI Studios referred to Lord's Point as this point. FHI recommends rezoning it, but they didn't make the effort to know its character and even the name of this special part of Stonington. These lapses in transparency continue with PCC currently planning to hold a zone change public information session via Zoom on June 26 with only one week of public notice. Now, this is discussed at YouTube uh, 143.50 to 144.50 minutes. The public notice time and choice of Zoom shows poor judgment. This, lack, this scale of change calls for a much, much higher level of public engagement. For example, letters to each affected property owner, Board of Selectmen opinion pieces on the why, press releases, multiple public hearings, and importantly, input from other town boards such as the Police Commission, Traffic Lights, Board of Ed, New Students, Conservation, Green Space, and EDC Development, as well as others. Please consider reconsider scheduling the zone change Zoom info session to a later date at the high school, not soon. Furthermore, the planning department has advised me that FHI's recommendations will go to a public hearing for adoption in the spring of 2025. To an active observer, these actions show a deep lack of transparency and are extremely concerning. In 2024-25, the town commences a new POCD to engage the public and hear its thinking on the future of Stonington. It seems wrong for a zone change of this scale to be proposed and considered prior to the commencement of the POCD process. I urge the first selectman to take action to approve transparency and to clarify whether FHI's recommendations are a study or a change in policy outside of the POCD process. 
Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Juan. Thank you for doing all that research. Um, because it's public comment, I won't get into a whole back and forth, but just so you know, um, Stacy did already send this to our town planner, so I'll meet with him, if not this week, then next week, to go over this, and then we'll follow up with you and talk more. Thank you. And we'll talk as a board probably again. Appreciate it. Thank you, Juan. Thank you. Any other public comment? All right, and if not, okay. Could I get a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes of May 22nd, 2024? So moved. I wasn't there, but I seconded it. Thank you. All right, to me. Um, motion, any discussion? No. Nope. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. And then, same thing for June 3rd, 2024. This was a special meeting minutes. Could I get a motion to approve? Motion to approve the special meeting minutes. Second. June 3rd. June 3rd. Thank you. Second. Any discussion? No. no. All, those, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you, Stacey. Um, so just under correspondence to note, we received applications from Bennett, Brissett, John Prue, and Alyssa Morrison for the Planning and Zoning Commission. And we also received applications from Laura Jackson, David Klein, Zachary Boudoir, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, Linda Camilio, and Don Steinoff for the Ethics Commission. Um, then we'll talk more about, I'm sure, all this later. Um, then under appointments, Shellfish Commission. Yeah. Um, letter from Sarah Baker. That, that wasn't not addressed to you. Yeah, she didn't address it to the um, board. So I'm going to talk about it under comments, um, okay. but yeah, she didn't okay. address it to the board. Um, and I got a lot of letters, but yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> appointment to the Shellfish Commission. Could I get a motion to appoint Hunter Browning as an alternate member of the Shellfish Commission? So moved. Second. Um, so I talked to Hunter. He was great. Um, he seems like he's really wants to be active on there and get involved and kind of hands on. Um, and so I think it would be great. And the, the Shellfish Commission seems good for that. Sounds good. So we thank him very much. And then, all right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Um, so luckily we've got one person going for appointment for the Housing Opportunities Commission. Um, there are how many, how many three openings or two? Three? Maybe three. Well, there's five. Paul, Lynn, and Kevin. Kevin. What? Do we replace Kevin? I can't remember, but we know we have more openings on this. So, um, thankfully, Paul Geis has stepped forward. Um, he's currently the chair of the Cultural District Commission, and he um, is very interested in serving on this as well. So, I'd like to ask for a motion to appoint Paul Geis to the Housing Opportunities Commission. So moved. Very second. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? No, I know he's very active. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys know of anyone else? Um, well, I've been asking, believe me. I know, right? Um, it's a tough sell. <laughs> um, and it might be interesting if, obviously, we have more applicants than we have spots for for planning and zoning. So, again, it might be worth you know, for uh, well, yeah. some of those people yeah. to think about it. Um, but We do have other appointments coming up for planning and zoning at the end of the summer. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, we'll see about that. So, oh, but thank you to Paul. So, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Kit Harper has res um, given us her resignation for the Beautification Committee. We thank her for her service to this committee, and they do great work. Um, so that's, um, and now, nothing under old business, and now new business. We got there very quick. Um, discussion with Chief Del Grosso on proposed changes to parking and traffic regulation ordinance and proposed ordinance to enforce school speed zones and speed cameras. Over to you. I use the camera at you. You can stay there. Careful, he's on. You can stay there or you can come over here, whatever you prefer. So the, the first thing I'll just talk about in reverse is the um, speed cameras. The speed cameras themselves, there was an, um, a uh, DOT has come out with the ability for towns to uh, have an ordinance put forth to allow speed cameras in different areas. And they have, re, they have um, a set um, requirement for each one. Uh, the one that I'm looking at are the ones for actually for school zones. And in those school zones, to be able to come forth and uh, provide an, an ordinance to the town for the town to vote on to see if they approve and if they do, then we could place 
uh, speed cameras within the, the school zones. This is more of an information that I want to move forward with that and take a look at it and find out if there's something that uh, we can move forward with. Um, I've received all the information, um, spoke to the company that uh, provides the cameras themselves and also gone over um, a lot of the documents that we're required to do and I wanted to make sure that you're just aware that we're going to move forward with it. I spoke to the Board of Police Commissioners so they're aware and we're going to start exploring it. So that's mostly just an information for that so you're aware of it. Right. If you have any questions about that portion. Is there like a software that doesn't read the license plate? Is yeah, so there's a license plate reader component in that. And what it does is it takes all the information from that. And if it meets the uh, requirements of where it would set at, it would um, issue infractions. And it's the same uh, requirements for any town the municipality wants to put one in within their uh, city or town. And you do it for certain times, like in the summer, if the schools aren't open, yeah. you still have it? Or yeah, that's what we would do, is we do it during school hours, okay. and what it would be in when the school is open. Okay. Yep, and that would all be, uh, you know, outlined within. I, I think it's a, um, I think it's important that we focus on the ability to, uh, to have more enforcement in those areas, you know, based on the fact of school being open, and, and where a couple of them are. We have put out our speed signs throughout town, that records speeds and gives um, the ability to know if there's an issue or problem. Uh, Dean's Mill in that area, we've had some complaints that come down there for speeding. We set up our speed sign down there. Um, it gives us the uh, times of the speeding. It gives us the, uh, the, the, um, the dates that are their highest levels. And we're able to take that information and have focused patrols in that area to do it. Um, I think that having, what's that? Have you found a significant problem? In certain times, yeah, there's certain times that we've had issues uh, with that. But um, what we do is we take that data again and we take uh, focused patrols in the area to try to reduce the speeding. Um, and, it, and it does have an effect. Can you do it on state roads or on the town roads? Um, for the, the ordinance aspect of it, I'm almost positive you can do state roads too because it is a state. Yeah, yep, you could. Um, however, I, I think there's a lot more that needs to be looked into to find out um, what are the benefits? So obviously you want to put it in there to have some compliance and you want to have people to reduce their speeds uh, you know, in those school zones. And I, I just really, I, I need to look more into it and go through it and want to make sure that we have, um, when all those questions come up, we're able to answer them and confidently you know, based on the information. It's going to take a little bit of time with it, but I wanted you to be aware of it. You, you said you discussed with the uh, Board of Police Commissioners. Has it been discussed the agenda? It has, and it was just brought up to them. The, the same thing is here. Is that where it will be? Yeah. They're the, They're the legal traffic authority. I'm sorry, Ben. Yeah, just so the public has a chance to weigh in if they see it as an agenda. Yeah, no question. They the they are the legal traffic authority. They're the ones that are going to have to um, you know approve for me to move forward with that anyways. Um, and then, uh, and where they would be, or you know, where we would have them. So they would have to have that first. That would be the first step of approval. Um, this is more of an information that we're we're looking into it. And I think it's important to give everybody plenty of time to uh, you know to talk about it, go over it, see benefits. You know what's what's positive, what's negative, and be able to bring up those questions so I can you know be prepared to be able to give you the answers to it. So what would the um time frame be perhaps for before the board, board of police commission I haven't set the time frame now. I've received all the information I needed. It's just probably in the last two, three months, I believe it was, but it, we've been given the opportunity to start it. Um, and now I've just read through the information. For the speed cameras in the school zones, it's limited the amount of information that we have to provide um, to the state, and it's an application. The state has to approve it also. So I don't have a set timeline at this point. So it's not, that's not going to happen overnight? No. Nope, not at all. So you just have to get in contact or update? You know, and then yeah, it's a, yeah, it's one thing for us to know, but I think it, yeah. you know, no, it's a big, know. Yeah, it's a big deal that ordinance has to be put into place. Um, and it, so that's, I'm just trying to do it well in advance to let you know that works for me. Thank you. Thank you. And that there are different areas you can put them in. I'm only exploring the school zone. Remember the other one? Oh, okay. So, um, as you're aware, uh, there's been two times we went to the, uh, well, it, it's been, a, the town's been approached to change the ordinance when it comes to parking uh, in the town. Then in February of 23, uh, it was voted upon in the, in the format that it was presented, and it was uh, rejected a vote of 71 to 65. Uh, some changes were made to that, 
It was brought forth again, uh, and that vote was 61 to 61, and that was July of 23 on that. Um, a lot of information was received from the meeting that we had prior to the vote that was very helpful. Uh, concerns that people had in town of um, the impact of it, certain questions that they had, and based on that uh, information that we received from that meeting, we made a determination that, well, I made a determination, we still have a problem. We have a parking problem in Mystic. We have a uh, flow problem of uh, moving vehicles uh, in Mystic. We have problems on 27 with traffic. We have, when we have large events and things of that nature, and parking's all part of that. Um, and just because it, it, in that format it didn't pass, I still think, I, I get a lot of complaints that come in for parking. Um, and we have to do something to allow us to manage it better, in my opinion. Um, based on that, uh, we, we made some changes again uh, on the concerns, and I wanted to just go over those changes with you. I would like to uh, move forward to be able to bring it to the public again with the current changes and see if that's something that uh, we can get an ordin ordinance change to the parking itself. Um, we're going to do a public information meeting to discuss the proposed changes. Uh, that is uh, scheduled for June 25th of 24 at 6 p.m., and that's at the Mystic Firehouse. Um, and that information will be put out for everybody so they can have uh, a uh, time to come up and talk and ask their questions when it comes to it. But I wanted to give you uh, basic bullet points of the proposed changes within it. Um, and then if you have any questions about those. The first thing is the town. What's that? Yep, it's June 25th of 2024, 6 p.m. And that's domestic firearms. So the, uh, one of the first changes we brought up was the town right-of-way. What happens is there, we have current parking signs that are no parking throughout town. Those current parking signs that say no parking, um, it's for the roadway itself. Uh, when we have cars that park completely off the roadway, there's a, a, a technicality in that, that they are par no parking in a no parking area, but they're completely off the road, but it's still in a town right away. Um, with that, I'm looking for the changes to give the an officer the ability to still issue an infraction um, for the, the vehicle, it's not an infraction, a ticket, a parking ticket, for the, um, they're still illegally parking, but how the ordinance currently reads, if they're in that right away portion, that um, there's a question if we're, uh, that we don't want to issue a ticket most of the time. So that right away wants to, I want to be able to add that portion to that. And the right away is, again, it's town property, it's, it's uh, specified where those locations are, and there's no confusion on, uh, on that portion of it. Another point is that our current fine is $25. I think $25 is, is way too low. Um, you want people to, uh, you want compliance in parking, you want people not to park places because um, they don't want to get a fine. Uh, some people choose, uh, we believe, in my opinion, to uh, park and receive a $25 fine because it's like, I can park there and get charged $25 and I'm okay with that. Um, so we're looking for that increase to go to times. 25 has been for a long time, that's been the fine. So the increase uh, to 50, I think, is an acceptable increase. I think it's, it's probably lower than a lot of other areas when it comes to the fine. Um, the other thing is I wanted to be able to, some, some of the concerns that came up was putting out parking meters for fee-based parking and to say that we're putting out kiosks, we're putting out parking meters, and people are really against having that. Um, I'm looking for the ability to, to allow the Board of Police Commissioners to put forth a, um, to say that we can have digital help to be able to do feed parking. And what that is, is it's not putting out a kiosk, it's not putting, it's using a service, changing a sign, that sign itself is allowing somebody to use an app or to call somebody to actually have paid metered parking, is what it is. So there are no kiosks, there are no, um, there are no uh, meters that are put in place. But what it does is that the paid parking portion, all I'm asking for in there is to allow the Board of Police Commissioners to authorize us to use paid parking on public, on public streets on public streets correct the electronic version um it, it doesn't change anything that we currently have in the process the process would be that if somebody want if the town so the the fees would be set by the board of selectmen it would not be set by the board of police commissioners and if the somebody wanted to have the town wanted to have 
feed parking throughout town, they would still need to go to the Board of Police Commissioners and say, in these designated spots that are currently um, no you know, parking by time limits or no parking or anything like that, if you wanted to be able to put that, you'd have to still go to the Board of Police Commissioners. You'd still have to request to have that sign changed and be able to do it. This is basically just allowing the Board of Police Commissioners to have feed parking. Um, yeah, the, the uh, feedback that I'm hearing and that I've heard from the last two referenda on this from residents in downtown Missick are, you know, they're, they're terrified that they're going to be paid parking in front of the houses, yep. um, which I know that's not being proposed. They've also been asking for quite a long time for resident parking. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if that can be considered at the same time. And I, I think that that may... Um, get people on board with the idea of being part. So what I'm trying to do is make this as, as very limited and as basic as possible, and then when people want to make those types of changes, they go through the current processes that we have. So if you wanted, to, you give them the ability to do fee parking or to change that type of parking. Then if somebody wants resident parking in front of their home or their complex or whatnot, they go through the normal process of going in front of the Board of Police Commissioners. They propose what they want to do, and the Board of Police Commissioners does what they, they do. Can, that, can the ordinance cover that? It could, but I'm... It already does on the charter of the Police Commission. So Correct. It, it wouldn't be a place for the ordinance to say that because it's already the charge of the... downtown Pawkatuck and throughout town, there's other areas that are um, become uh, overwhelming with parking complaints and problems and issues. Um, and as a town, to in my opinion, to be responsible, we have to move forward with something. Well, um, I'm not, yeah. I think it has to take the residents into account. And, and, I, think and I think you're going to find that when you, when you have the, the forum. Right. I, the, and I am taking the residents into account because I believe that all I'm asking to do is to allow the feed parking okay. And, the, and then keep all the processes where they are. Some of the concerns that came up, and then what it does, the fee aspect of it, that, that's up to the board of selectmen to determine what level it is, how it is, meaning that if somebody wants, that's a resident wants, where. what's that? But not where. Local not where, but that is a local traffic authority, and that's what the, the, it's their current responsibilities and their, their current ability now. And um, it, I'm not trying to change any of that when it comes to it. But right now, if somebody wants resident parking, Downtown, they can ask for it. They can ask for resident parking anywhere in front of the Board of Police Commissioners to do that. Um, I think that the simple thing is just allowing the feed parking and the processes to stay the same with it. I, I'm not comfortable with adding other things that would change the current processes. Well, let me ask you this since you're here, um, presenting um, in this uh, informal discussion, how do you feel about resident parking? Um, I believe that I'm not the legal traffic authority, and I believe that if that comes up to you, no, I don't, but if it comes up to a meeting, and we have a meeting, and we have a specific area that they're speaking of, I need to have all the information like the Board of Police Commissioners to be able to give a proper answer on that. I think it's a basic, it's a general question when it comes to it. I think there's a parking problem downtown. I think it's more complex than just taking one topic and saying, this is the answer to it. It's all different in different areas. It's a small compact area that a lot of people are that are coming to, um, and there's issues all over it. And sometimes we look at those issues and it's very impactful for one person, but not for the majority. And sometimes you have it where um, it seems to be very impactful for one or two people and it, it's not so much for others. And it's, you really have to look at it each individual situation, I think. Thank you. Sure. And this is, again, this is, 
it's, it's a tough concept. It's a tough thought process. And um, it's something where I believe that we have a responsibility uh, as a town. We recognize, nobody's, nobody ever comes in and says there's, there's no parking problems in Stonington. Um, there are, um, and we need to move forward with some of the, the changes, I believe, to be able to do that. But I think we have decent processes that are in place to um, make decisions where the parking spaces should be, how they should be uh, utilized, and um, I think this is a, a, a good answer to the concerns that came up before. Um, and I think that's, that's all on the, those bullet points. But, and, it, and I think it's a good idea um, to have that information period to be able to, and people are gonna ask, and what are the fines gonna be? Can I go downtown for a half an hour, am I gonna get, and that comes to the, the Board of Selectmen and make a determination is, you can change, in these types of programs, you can have it where, if you're a resident, um, you can have it where it's resident based. If you're an employee that's in the area, you can base it on that. You can base it if you're residents on how those uh, fee schedules work. You can have it where the first you know hour or two or three hours are free. There's those are decisions that that um, I think should be left for um, the uh, for the selectmen to make a decision on on that portion of it. And then if the sign should be there or if that parking space should be there. I think it should still uh, lay with the um, legal traffic authority. No, I, you know, I've heard similar people who have said to me, I just, you know, I've always parked out in front of my house. I don't want to have to pay to park there. Oh, so that's obviously a similar concern. And it should be a concern. It's also a concern that um, there's businesses down there that have people from residences that park in front of their businesses and don't move for three days. Yeah. Um, and that's a concern for people that are trying to have a business. And then you have concerns from people that um, you have employees from businesses that park in areas that don't move and they, they park in residential areas. Yeah. Um, I can, every, you name it. A lot of them work in Groton too. And a lot of work in Groton that go uh, over there. Yeah. And you can't blame people to park somewhere where it's convenient for them to do what that's convenient for them. But it's up to us, I believe, to put some type of organization in place for them so we can just make it where it's a better situation for um, many of the people. And that's why. If not, I wouldn't you know, be presenting it again. Um, but it is important to listen to all those concerns that came up. The concerns that you brought up um, have come up. But we've had several other concerns about it. So I just don't want to change current processes that are working on. No, I, and I think it makes sense to do the public information meeting to hear from the public sure. and then before any kind of vote to another information meeting and you can put up as many signs as you want um and if i don't have the ability if i have my officers that are in in mystic and you have a a, a lot of people down there and a lot of people visiting they're doing a lot more things than trying to enforce parking um and if you have something where you ask somebody not to do anything but you don't have anything to um incentivize them to comply, such as meter parking or tickets being uh, at a different rate, you're not going to get a lot of compliance. So, and we'll, we'll hire our uh, community service officers again to work on parking issues throughout town. Um, but again, that is that's limited, and it's limited based on a season. And our parking problems happen uh, throughout town in all different times of the year. So, and I'm, I'm hopeful that you will uh, you will prove the fact of us moving forward and be able to um, to do that. Make the changes. When you say moving forward, well, I, I send it to a town meeting. Send it to a town meeting. To be able yeah. to I would I wouldn't be prepared to do that until after the forum. Until um, well, after the what? Until after the public forum. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, honestly, I I wish that. Um, the forum would come before the drafting of the resolution, but... Well, we have the ordinance, and I, I you said, we I, you know, I, I just think it's backwards in my, in my point of view. Well, I have to start with something. Yeah. I and mean, I can go to the forum and, and realize that there's input. something different to change and do yeah. that. And, and it can still be changed. You can but still change it. But there's also been two years of input, and I think they did a really good job of taking that input and making changes to the ordinance so that there is something to put forward. They can show the changes they made based on feedback and then have a further discussion. Um, and I, I want to also say, I, I just can't thank you all enough for sticking with this, because again, the amount of 
calls and concerns and frustrations that I can't imagine you guys hear, we hear from people, and we did put two plus years of work into a study with Groton, for those who don't remember. We did involve residents on both sides of the river, businesses, stakeholder interviews, feedback. It was a very extensive process, and again, a lot of those concerns were raised, and then I felt alleviated while we were engaged in the process, and then the longer it went on, it, it, they revived. But at the end of the day, I know it's hard to say about government in these times, but people also have to have some trust. They have to have some trust in our police department, in our board of police commissioners, and in our board of selectmen that if a resident comes forward with a legitimate concern, that they're going to be treated respectfully and properly and go through a process, and we're going to try and come up with solutions. Um, so I think the idea that, yeah, we can't, they can't promise that they're going to offer resident parking, but I also can't imagine a situation where if they have residents coming forward saying, you put in paid parking two streets over, and now I can't park in front of my house and I have no driveway, that they're not going to be responsive to that need. So that's just well, I would hope thought. so. Yeah, and I believe that. So, but we'll see the, uh, now that we've had this discussion, we'll post the um, information about this meeting. Um, and Ben actually was based on your feedback, I don't remember a month ago about oh, having remember. something, and the fire department was great to host us. Um, and thank you, Stacey, took a lot of work to get it together. So we'll post it. And I know they don't like to give out that room. <laughs> yeah, they were very nice to us though about it, so that was good. So if you guys can help us get the word out. Um, I'm also meeting with Paul Sarger, who was our um, representative on that committee for those two years. Um, I think tomorrow, actually, to talk more about this. So hopefully between everybody we can get people to engage and, and have a good conversation about it. So thank you for all the time that you put into this. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. And we won't be offended if you guys want to leave. Um, <laughs> so under, we have a request to use Donahue Park from the Ocean Community Chamber for River Glow on August 3rd from 7 to 10 with August 4th as a rain date. Uh, could I get a motion? So moved. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? Is there any change from what it's been? From, I don't think there's been any changes from past events. For this event? Yeah. No, there's no change. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, there's a lot. So street number assignment. Street, the request that street number uh, for map 49, block two, lot one, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, become street numbers 82, 86, 94, 98, 102, 104, 106, and 114 <laughs> South Anguilla Roads joined in Connecticut 06378. Could I get a motion? So moved. Right here, a second. Second round an auction. <laughs> um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, comments. This is going to take a little while, but um, Deb, do you want to go first? Then um, and then I have a lot. Sure, I just have a couple quick ones. Okay, then, yeah. And then you can go. Um, um, just touching base, um, I have been attending meetings with the Mystic River Boat House Park, um, and I did talk to somebody from DECD just kind of outside of work. <laughs> And um, we're moving along, trying to get, you know, look at the budget estimate and see where we're going and getting ready to ask DECD for additional money, which, not that they've guaranteed it, but they've been very positive about, you know, potentially giving us another 50% of our grant. So, been working on that. Um, I met with, I've been meeting a couple times and talking to the town engineer about that drainage. Um, and Thank the you. issue next to the wastewater treatment plant, where they may be doing some um, soil removing from which the, which place treatment plant? It's Mystic. Um, it's oh, oh, that yeah. plant. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Project, by the that sure. yeah. So, um, trying to kind of go through there and help them kind of negotiate between the permits and, and you know soil testing and, and yeah, things like that. There was so. uh, concern about who's, who, where the soil originates from, and yeah. who take, basically takes ownership of it. Yep, and then that's still a concern. So, um, been trying to help them just kind of answer talk questions. Chuck Sheen about it. Yeah, because <laughs> he's been. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, so that's just quick. There, um, I was really excited to attend the first meeting of the cemetery commission last oh, night. Oh, was that? Facilitate the meeting. It was great. I mean, and I'm so excited now. I think I'm going to have to volunteer on some of their things. Um, it was really good. Um, they got a lot done. And um, it was just really a positive meeting. And, uh, you know, a lot of people who are really 
you know, they have a mindset for working for them and getting things done. And they all come from a different perspective, which is really great. You know, the information, the public access, the mapping, the public engagement. You know, there's a lot of different things, and they're all coming from a different perspective. Which So it was a very good meeting. So I was happy to attend. Okay, thank you for doing that. <laughs> And um, my final thing, I tried to make some notes. So I had a really good meeting with um, Paul Muniz, who I've talked to before, and he is on the Town of Brantford Climate Resiliency Commission. Mm -hmm. um, and he has helped me a lot in the past with kind of some information, what's Brantford doing. Um, we have a lot of similarities mm -hmm. uh, with Brantford. Um, and he had called just to see how we're doing in our resiliency, and, and he was the one that originally had told us about the fund, you know, the Connecticut approved fund, trying to get some money to save towards projects, which they do have a couple million in their fund, and um, they're able to. Um, yes, they have. They are, and so he was talking to me about one project they recently did, and he sent me a copy, and I'm going to share it with WPCA and Clifton and, and others. They did a priority study on their WPCA, including all the pump stations, the piping, and the treatment plant itself. Did I asked for it last year, though. So. Yeah. <laughs> Looking basically at where are things located, what's the risk with the flooding, and, and a lot of different issues. So he sent me a copy of that study um, with kind of some recommendations and next steps, but which is all great. But what we kind of talked about the most is. It's really hard, and this is why, you know, he called me, he's going to call Madison, you know, for, we're doing different things in our individual towns, but he and I have talked about, what if we had a regional working group? Um, you don't have to meet often, maybe even quarterly, but if you could get people from the towns together, you could go after larger regional grants or share information that one town might have that another doesn't. Now, I don't know how you facilitate that, but like he told me a few things, like they're installing water level monitoring stations in town and collecting data. They have this new thing, they're using an app called My Coast, where residents can actually take pictures of the flooding and share it in this app. And they're trying to, even though that's sort of anecdotal data, they're collecting um, the data that way. So. You know, we said, well, how wouldn't it be great to kind of be able to share this information? And I know in a sense the COG does some of that. Yeah, but you're right because, and the COG is amazing, there's so many things, but the way we're group with our 22 plus towns yeah. for Eastern Connecticut, we, for this type of topic, we have a lot in common with, I think they're river COG, so they're a different COG. Mm -hmm. So it could be really beneficial to get kind of coastal towns that share similar issues mm -hmm. together. So I don't know, you know, he and I are both interested. I don't know how to get started. He was going to reach out to Madison. Yeah. And I wonder if that's something we could ask our climate change task force mm -hmm. to that take a lead good. on. I mean, they've been looking yeah. for things to help coordinate, get five or six coastal towns together yeah. and post. And the aquarium has been hosting them yeah. and has great tech. Now, we just talked about Zoom has its problem, but it also makes it easier sometimes for people to yeah. participate. Yeah. So maybe. No, that do you that want to take the lead sense. on reaching out? Sure, to, I can um, reach out to Rick. Mary Ellen and Mary Ellen, just because yep. she hosts it. Okay. And then they could maybe add it to an agenda yeah. topic. And Yeah, and I could even come and talk to them more about it. Thank but, you. But, you know, we we're talking about That's other exciting. groups, like what about the Navy or the Seaport? I mean, this yeah. group could maybe not even just be municipalities yeah. as you move on down the road. Yeah, because yeah, they might you, connect. Yeah, across, yeah. yeah. And it's the larger cool. grants, the regional grants and projects that one yeah. town alone you tell one story to do. Yeah, so. so all right, I will do that. I'll reach out. Thank you. I think that would be really good. I was excited. I was like, wow. Thank you. <laughs> so, all right. And so, I, I think I think that's pretty much it. Like, Any questions for them? No. Do you want to go next? Sure. Um, I don't have, really have a lot to report. I just I wanted to um, address Blunt's uh, comments. Um, I share a lot of his concerns. I do not think there's a problem with transparency. Uh, I've been involved in most of the meetings that both uh, PZC has been hosting with it with FHI. Um, they're they're uh, they're really planning workshops, and they have been good about uh, taking public input. In fact, I think it, at times I think they've let uh, some members of the public hijack the the meeting and the process. So. Um, I don't think there's been any any problem with uh, allowing public comment, and um, 
this is all, these are at this point, these are all just proposals that will be put to a public hearing and a, and a regular public hearing process, like any other, whether it's a zone change or a text amendment, um, whatever it is, it, there will be a public hearing. And uh, all the inherent uh, opportunity for public comment at that time. Um, so I, I don't have any problem with that pro with the process. I I do agree with Mr. White on uh, the scope of the right, and I've I've addressed uh, this before. I I think that it's unfortunate that this is taking place at a time when we should be working on the POCD. I totally um, agree. I think that it would have been great if we could have just stopped at phase one, which which is really those of us that were on the commission 10, 10 and 15 years ago when the idea of a zoning uh, regulation rewrite was first floated, um, the idea behind it really was reformatting and cleaning it up and making it conform to state statute, et cetera, which was all uh, accomplished in phase one. Nobody ever really talked about the, the uh, scope of the uh, changes that are being proposed now, which I, I feel are much more uh, in line with what should take place in the POCD process. So, you know, it, it, again, I think that, and I voiced the concern at the time, and I think that we should have just stopped at phase one and moved to POCD. I still feel that way. No, I agree with you. I feel like we're putting the cart before yeah, the horse. Yeah, it's, and, I mean, and the these are major really changes. Not going to get any input. Well, they, I think, to best my ability, they have been having public <clears throat> hearings and workshops. Yeah. So, I mean, they are getting input. And, again, it was unfortunate the way the funding worked out, but it is what it is. So, well, I think we're saying we did do POCD you know, review internally all last year, waiting now till July 1st so we can put out an RFP for a consultant. To now pick up the POCD because the POCD is due in 2025, so we actually need to be working on it ASAP. Okay. So this we will actually, all be, we were late last time, and there was no penalty for that. We will be so now we're going after a ton of grants, and they do say if you don't have an updated POCD, you can't get that mother. They hold you to that, but it is an unfortunate timeline. I agree, and I think they're trying to do the best they can with what they were given. But I think the planning department is working hard to try and weave in the POCD feedback they've already gotten, the zoning workshops where they are getting feedback in the survey, which any help getting the survey out there, you know, they are trying really hard to get virtual and in-person input um, and to keep having more workshops to flow back and forth between the POCD. But I just, you know, I did just want to clarify that you know, some of this is funding, not the planning department's choosing. It's just the way it worked out with the well, budget. Well, I, I, I still would, would reiterate that I think the, the um, where I agree with with Blunt is that the phase two uh, is perhaps too broad a brush, and um, that I, I just think they're going further than than most people expected with that. Um, again, it, there will be a public hearing on it, and um, chance for for more public input at that point. Uh, so it could all be for naught, and I think that if they if they try to go too far with it, I think they're going to kill the whole thing. Um, so, you know, I've advised them of that myself, that, um, you know, while I may agree with the uh, policy um, prescriptions that, that they're pursuing in some of these, some of these uh, chapters, um, I think that they might want to uh, scale it back a bit to get the public on board. Um, so that's all I have to say about that. Uh, I did want to comment on the, um, the filming at the town dock on Friday. I was I was a little disappointed. I, I got um, I was there actually because I had a meeting with the harbor master on the dinghy dock progress, uh, and I had to find parking. And I ended up, I almost got towed because I was parked in this place that they hoped to reserve for a celebrity uh, celebrity somebody. Um, and almost towed my car. But anyway, I heard a lot of feedback from people that work there, fishermen and boat owners that were having trouble accessing their boats even. And it just seemed for the uh, expedited uh, permitting that we allowed, uh, the size of the event surprised me. And, and I just, I certainly never would have approved that or uh, voted to approve that on such short notice without 
without more information. And we have a waterfront commission. I think it should have been handled by them uh, first. And I mean, if it was something um, the Mystic River Park, we get requests like that all the time in the application process as they come before us with an application and a regular meeting and we discuss it and we get all the particulars and then we either grant the approval or we don't. But um, to do, just to do it that quickly, it was, uh, I think was a mistake. So that's all I'll say about that. I have a bunch of things, but I do want to just react to those. So for one, Blunt, like I said, we'll circle back, but I do just want to say, I think some of your points about the interactions and feedback is really helpful, and I don't think that necessarily we can't take your feedback into account and not just that wait till 2025 for another public hearing time frame. I think, again, I'll talk more to the planning department, but this was helpful. This was the first time I'm really hearing about this, so I, I do think there'll be things we could probably modify or change to be sure because I know like they have they've had a workshop on each but lots of times people don't know about the workshop or react to the in-person workshop until after the the finding so there might I would hope there'd be opportunities to maybe figure out how to add in some more since as you said these are more substantial and like I said we are trying to fast track come July 1st getting a consultant on board to help them with the POCV and to be sure it's all woven together um, and that in some ways, some of the work that FHI has done can feed really well into the POCD because they have been engaging on certain topics um, already. But I, I understand those concerns. Um, and just to say, I think our board, I think it's been good. People could disagree. I, I like that we've stayed out of this and let the people we've appointed on the Planning and Zoning Commission run with it and not, you know, I haven't gone to any of these meetings on purpose, not because I'm not interested. I would love to, but I just... I don't want to be seen as having a heavy hand in what's happening. I want the process to play out. But with that comes drawbacks, I haven't seen this. So I really do appreciate hearing from you about some of the concerns. And we'll take them seriously. And like I said, we'll set up another meeting to talk about it in more detail. Um, and then um, all right, there's a lot. So okay, I'm going to go to the Ethics Commission. So it was announced on Friday, June 7th, that we're accepting applications for the Ethics Commission through June 28th. Um, the two ethics complaints have been filed with the town attorney who deem that they should move on to an ethics commission for a probate cause hearing, which is a confidential investigation. As both complaints are similar in nature, they will be combined and they're reviewed at the same time by the same commission. Per Connecticut General Statute 1-82A, all information on the topic shall remain confidential throughout the process, including if the commission finds no probable cause. If they find probable cause, the commission shall make public its findings and move the process forward. Therefore, to be clear, no further details regarding the complaints will be shared. Further information regarding the commission responsibilities and application can be found on the town's website under news. So I did just want to add, for anyone not watching or listening, yet yeah, even our Fellow board members don't know what the ethics complaint is. They can't legally know. Um, no one who applies can know. They'll only find out once they're seated and they start their sessions. Um, so again, we, we're, I'm very pleasantly surprised. We've had five different people reach out. We do need eight. So if anyone's listening and interested, it's challenging because you can't serve on any other town board or commissions. So it or narrows, be an elected official. Or be elected or be elected to any town committee, political there's, committees. I had one question on the makeup yeah. of the commission. There was um, there's language about uh, minority and majority members of the board selecting and getting our town attorney basically specific. said it's very old school the way the ordinance was written and that he would advise that we just vote together because there is no majority or minority representation <laughs> on this commission. So he said that we should just vote together. As a slate or um, like we individual. would with all other appointments. Like individually as we would with all other appointments. Okay. Um, I mean, we'll see if we even get eight, so hopefully we do. <laughs> um, so from what you said, yeah. they could go to the first meeting, find out about it, and, and they say, might say, I, I need can't to do step this back. Yeah, what, what yep. happens? Then we have to ask for more. Get more? Okay. Or we, if we have more, then we could say, okay, then we're going to go with these people as our second if anyone needs to recuse themselves. Okay. I think that's why having the alternates is helpful because then maybe the alternates would Can step up some kind of change. While we try and find other alternates um, so they could at least start. But um, and, yeah. and is this a limited 
time frame? Yes, they have to figure out within yeah, 90 days. Is there sure. a specific schedule for meeting? No, once they form, they'll be able to decide based on our very limited <laughs> meeting space where and when they'll meet. And then our town attorney will um, advise them and we will stay out of it. Okay. Nice. Anything else? Yeah. Um, and just to say again, like we're not, uh, we've gotten press inquiries and people reach out and everything. And just to say, you know, we're not trying to be not transparent. We legally cannot. So, you know, legally I could not even you know, engage on any of these topics. So it does make it challenging, but we really appreciate the people who kind of were brave and came forward and offered. Um, and if you all know of people, I would very much encourage them um, to apply. Um, okay, so the other thing is I wanted to share, I think Ben somehow already knew about it, maybe from DTC stuff. I, you didn't know about it. Um, yeah, just full disclosure. Sarah copied me on. Okay. Um, so, um, thank you for telling me that. Um, so, I received a request yesterday um, about flying the pride flag at Town Hall um, from a resident, and then subsequently a number of additional emails have come through. Again, everybody, I will comment just unbelievably polite. We get all sorts of emails and these are very, very polite and proactive. And I'd say the overarching goal that has been shared has been about, you know, how do we do more to celebrate and support this community? Um, and uh, so, so, again, this happened <laughs> yesterday, um, kind of late morning, and I really commend, I kind of commend myself, but no, I commend Stacy and Patty, our Director of Administrative Services, um, uh, we all really tried to, in the midst of a million other things going on, put um, a lot of effort into this just to prepare for this meeting so that we could get things moving. And and then I'll, I can also, I also had a good call with Sarah today. Um, but essentially, what I found so far, and we haven't gotten to get into as much detail as I would have liked, but is that we need a policy. So either an ordinance or a policy that the Board of Selectmen approves when it comes to commemorative or organizational flags being flown on town property. So due to a Boston you know, Boston lawsuit uh, case that they lost, um, the Office of Legislative Research, OLR, put out a position paper for Connecticut towns that really, again, my understanding is that you need to have a policy or ordinance in place. Um, and so I looked at a number of different towns. I pulled together what they had, and then um, Patty did additional research on who has policies, who doesn't, who, what they kind of say. So again, this is this all happened less than you know 24 hours ago, or about 24 hours ago. So um, we're working on it. But basically, no matter what, we have to have a policy. There's not enough time to do this, I and mean, it's mid June already. So I think this is something that we should you know, give more. Thought. Obviously, this is something um, a lot of towns are. By going policy, through. could it just be a vote of the board of selectmen? You have to have so, like, these are multi-page, intense legal policies. It's I, I actually think I could just give you one example because I pulled it up. Um, well, my battery's running low, but like, this is um. But it doesn't have to go to a town meeting. No, it just has, but like the town of Manchester has a. Do we, have, do we have any other four-page policies policy? like that? Well, this reminds me of the park. Like, I mean. Not when naming detail. the park, somebody wanted right. to we name created, a park, yeah. and we said we can't just That's a good idea. name a park. We need actually a policy to follow because you can't. And so we ended up with a policy for naming parks and and no, that's the same thing because yeah, the yeah, commission so and us yeah. said we approve it, yeah. but but it makes sense it because matter. you can't just randomly pick one right. whether or not you support it, and then then what happens next time? And so I think a policy would make yeah. And in this a case, legally we need to, to protect the town mm -hmm. from liability and lawsuits where other cities have already gone through this. Um, so but I think again, it's, it's just a, it's, again though, it's just a narrative that the Board of Selectmen agrees to adopt. It's, it's more no, detailed. It it, and it has to, this one has to yeah. go to the town attorney because of, again, the recommendations from the state Office of Legislative Research. And, um, and the town attorney. Specific, specifically for this type for, of? For any commemorative or organizational flag okay. on the town. It. And the same applies to schools for for their buildings. Um, so the recommend, the really requirement is we need to have a policy. We would have to go to the town attorney to review as well. And then, like I said, in reaching out to Sarah, since she was the one who originated the, the request um, today, what I said was, I think this is something that needs a lot of 
consideration, thought, time, um, no matter what, even if we did try and race it through, which I do like to do probably too much, um, we couldn't get it done by the end of, in time to do anything for June. So we said, let's regroup and try and talk with stakeholders who you know, have brought this forward and care about this. I'm happy to meet with them. Then we can talk more as a board. You're obviously all welcome to engage with people on this topic. But what we did want to do, because they brought this to my, our attention, I've always felt like our two chambers do a great job with Pride Month, and I never felt like the town really needed to, the town, like, you know, us needed to do something. But since now people have put forward a request, um, and like we said, it wasn't just about the flag, it was about celebrating that community and education and advocacy. Um, so we did talk about trying to pull together an event before the end of the month. Um, since it's not much time, we probably have to do something kind of simple, but I am going to hopefully have a meeting early next week with a few of the people who brought that forward. Um, and uh, try and pull together some type of event um, before the end of the month. And then we can talk more at a future meeting about, I think, the pros and cons of, I mean, some towns have chosen not to have a policy, some have chosen to have a policy that they will not fly any commemorative or organizational flags, and others have put in specifications around how the process should go when requesting to put up an organizational or commemorative flag. So unfortunately, again, like anything, at first I got the email, I thought, oh, this is simple, and it's not. Yeah. Um, but uh, that was, I wanted to update you guys, and I'll, if you want to say anything or share anything or assign me or us any no, work to do. No, I think you're following your, your No, I think we need a policy, and I think we need to consider, I mean, we need to do due diligence and yeah. talk to the attorney. Yeah, and, and I will say Sarah was great because she also sits on the Board of Ed, and they went through something similar not that long ago, so she was willing to share a lot of information and research that they already had. Obviously, it's a bit different for school than for town, just legally even. Yeah. But, um, you know, I think I think it's wonderful. And, like, just to point out again, we're not going to think, I'm not going to think of anything. You guys aren't going to always think of, you know, we need resident input and feedback and engagement. And especially when it's handled like this was so respectfully and thoughtfully and proactively, I really appreciate the way that they did reach out mm -hmm. and bring this to our attention that, this was kind of in you know, a miss that something we could have been doing a bit more on as a community. Thanks. Okay, so bear with me. I know you um, if you need to leave, but so there's just a lot happening. So the other stuff is um, the last night, <laughs> this of all this, all this others are happening. Last night we had our um, at risk disconnected youth um, 119K Commission local forum. Um, the Seaport was wonderful to host us. We probably had about 20 people participate, and it was wonderful, and Kyle joined us too, um, which was great. And we had a number of nonprofits that serve Stonington, but also operate you know, regionally or even some of them nationally, and sharing, we talked about challenges, best practices, gaps, opportunities for improvement. We had um, the Police Department, Human Services. We had Senator Summers, Representative Bumgardner, um, Representative Howard had to attend awards night, but he coordinated um, both of me and Representative Gardner ahead of time, so all that input was received. Um, we had just, it was a really, I think, fruitful, healthy, productive, somewhat depressing, but good direction conversation, and there's a lot more work for us to do, both in Stonington as a region and as a state, but um, it was just wonderful. All these people came out. It was a terrible timing. Oh, Stonington Public Schools, um, Allison Van Etten, and uh, teachers from high school and elementary participated. And some of the insights they shared was just so valuable. And I will say, on a positive note, Stonington is leading on so many issues. That's really amazing, thanks to just amazing partners we have between nonprofit, school, police, human services. Um, and there's a lot we can share with other people in the state, and then there's more that you know, we can hopefully grow on and do. Obviously, a lot comes back to funding, which would be state or federal or non uh, private foundation funding for these issues. But um, it was really eye opening and um, just really also heartwarming how much people really care and they do for this. So that was wonderful. Everybody participated. Also, just to say, we had our road safety audit, and I know we're going to meet with our POCD subcommittee. Um, we spent a few hours with DOT. This was something we requested probably like a year ago, but we're happy it happened. They said it'll take two to three months to get us a recommendation back, but I have to say it's actually FHI that <laughs> happens to be working with us on zoning um, that is partnering with DOT, state DOT to do these audits, and we started at the Mason's Island Light by, where people turn for the Y, and we ended at Wimpasek. 
Um, and it was very comprehensive. They had great recommendations. They definitely gave us some very honest feedback. Um, I think what they put forward is going to be very helpful for engaging our board of finance, for enga engaging on grants. Um, it was wonderful. We had public works participating, um, police, and myself, and um, planning. So everybody was able to kind of share feedback and thoughts. They were, they were really, I was very impressed. Um, so hopefully we can take that and actually use it um, for a lot of really good work. Um, and then I'll, um, we're also going to meet, so I'll have some other updates. But you know, it's, it's a long journey, but it was, it was, it was a good meeting. Um, the other thing I'll say is um, we've been talking a lot with the school as well as with the chambers and some parents and others about this um, book that the school has put out for parents and community members to read called The Anxious Generation. Um, and the school did a great round you know, discussion on it. We're looking to do something in the fall with the chambers because it's actually talking about how it impacts businesses as well as you're thinking about um, workforce and um, then trying to launch kind of a community supported campaign about getting kids off of phones and replacing it with more free play. Um, but hopefully even you know, doing a pretty big push and I'm just really proud of our school system and our superintendent. They, have just been leading the way on this, and I think the more different people have become aware of it, including myself, you start to realize just how frightening it is. And I'll say it loops back to the roundtable we had yesterday, where as people were sharing the disconnected youth, and we're talking a lot about trauma or homelessness, housing insecurity, poverty, a big part of the conversation also ended up at the impact that you know smartphones. You know, so not just social media, but everything that goes with it is part of this disconnection and inability to interact or be productive workers or just how linked it all is and how at this young age, you know, these brains are being really shaped by this um, and, and you know, the addiction of it. So we were talking now what we can do more with our prevention council on this topic as well. So, um, you know, it was a very, I think, again, it's overwhelming, but healthy and again, just proud of Stoynton for kind of taking a lead on this and I know um, the superintendent also reached out to Westerly superintendent who seems on board with doing some movement on this as well. Um, and then as we get a groundswell, we'll bring in more people. But that, that then um, Safe Futures has a, um, a breakfast on Friday that will be, some of us from the town will be attending, um, which is always really important and sobering. Um, right after that is the um, people get sworn in as American citizens at the seaport during Flag Day. So we'll I'll be there. Um, and then I think I'm trying to, those were some of the, we've been working, I've been working a lot on getting letters of support for the CBG grant that's due on Friday. We've gotten some really good ones, um, so hopefully that helps. Um, and then, Stace, anything else? Do you want to tell them about the drill we did today? Oh, yeah, today we did a four, <laughs> four, four, hour. four hour drill. Um, the governor's kind of emergency management team calls an annual drill that we gathered here and it was about the scenario was election challenges right ranging from cyber to protests to a range of issues and so we had the registrar's town clerk pd uh, captain schneider ran it all he did a great job it we were there um all the oh, not all most of the fire chiefs because things could impact their districts um there were also some fire scenarios, so it was um, it was long. Our feedback is probably like it could be a little bit shorter, but it was helpful to get everybody together and talk through scenarios and problem solving, and it even made us think of, oh, like some simple things that we maybe should be doing and some more comprehensive things, but also some things that we've already been doing that are really good. Anything else? I mean, you could keep talking. I know. There's, just been, there's been a lot happening. Everybody's very, very busy. Um, we still haven't been able to hire a town engineer. Um, we got close and didn't succeed. So that'll be going out again if anybody knows an engineer. Um, but otherwise, I say, yeah, we're very busy, but reach out. Um, we really appreciate people's feedback and input. And, um, and is that any questions? Um, no, I, just no, I just wanted um, one thing that I forgot from my comments was um, I, I mentioned that I met with Eric Dunch okay. on Friday about the dinghy docks. And, um, the Harbor Management Commission meeting this week on Monday. Uh, things seem to really be moving ahead now, kind of thanks to you, um, First Black Woman, 
and maybe to a lesser extent myself, but the, the attention that we've given it, I think, is really um, okay. pushing it along. And they, they're very, very yeah. grateful for that support. So I, and I hope that we'll get this, uh, when the time comes, get the support of the whole board. Push that through. Thank you. Good. Good. Right. Nope. We will stand adjourned. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.